Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. I have Sonia with me. Um, last name, Shab, because last time I messed it up. <laughs> I'm going to get it right this time. She is not only a friend, but a colleague. And she is here today to talk a little bit about inner healing and deliverance. It's a topic that I came to her and I said, hey, um, we're talking about the months and the seasons with God. And this is really a month where God wants to really intervene and, and take us through an uprooting process, which to me speaks loud and clear to inner healing and deliverance. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah for so sure. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Jody, for giving me the opportunity to share. I'm honored and excited. Me too. So, um, Sonia, you've been in the world of healing and ministry and um, and helping people, really, for like 10, 15, 20 years, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's been the journey that the Lord had me on from the very beginning. Yeah. Felt like he just like threw me into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got With my own, own life, stories. my own story. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, so just um, kind of rolling back the time a little bit to get everyone up to date. So we've been walking through what we call God's calendar in the months, and the current month that we're in is Keshvan, and that's from middle October to middle November, and this is also biblically when the floods came. So when Noah and the eight, all eight of them went into the ark, um, the ark is a representation of um, Jesus, and um Interestingly enough, I don't know if you know this or not, but the ark, the wood that was used, mm -hmm. the gopher wood, was sealed on both sides. And it's represent representative of the sealing that we've received. So wow. the sealing of both Holy Spirit and the blood. Um, and the, the, the word that they use is pitch. That's what they use to seal the wood. And the word means atonement in Hebrew. Wow. I know. That's fascinating. <laughs> I, God is so specific. So specific. I know. He's so <laughs> Everything good. has a purpose and a meaning with God. And that's what's oh, so in, so amazing. I love it. Yeah. 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 So this so this is month. The, the floods came. Yeah. The uprooting happened. And a lot of times when we get into this place in our lives where we notice that we have a place that needs some kind of attention, we're like, is it medication? Is it counseling? Is it prayer? Is it meditation? We're maybe not really sure. That's where I feel like this idea and this practice of inner healing and deliverance could really be leveraged. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that everybody has experienced trauma to some degree. I think there are statistics that something like 50% men and, and the other are um, women have experienced traumatic events in their lives, right? And it turns into post um, traumatic syndrome, right? Absolutely. If you're not, you know, they, they carry that, you're not even aware of it. PTSD. And it affects PTSD. That's yeah. Right. So that's very big right now yeah. um, as far as our society and the trauma and things like that that we go through. Yeah. And the purpose of, of talking about inner healing deliverance is actually to be able to identify some of these things, right? right? So we can bring some clarity into those areas and see what um, what God has available to, to, to help. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So when we when we talk about inner healing and deliverance, how does that, like it, for a person, let's say, let's say they're going through their day-to-day Day. And would you say, are there signs of like, hey, maybe healing th this kind of modality would be actually be a good fit for you? Like, what would some of the things be that they might see in their own lives where they go, huh, that might be a good fit? You know, I feel like um, it can come in, in different degrees in different ways, mm -hmm. but usually it is a pattern. It is something that you have identified that you've struggled with in the past yes. um, that you can't seem to break free from. Mm -hmm. It can be, uh, uh, or maybe it's a traumatic tr event where something really, really traumatically yeah. happened. And every time you're put in a situation, it triggers that. That's right. And so there's, I would say that there there's a feeling that something is not right. Yes. Um, maybe there's rage. Maybe there's, you know, anger in certain situations and you respond and you feel like you don't have control over it. It's That's just right. happening. Or maybe you're feeling a certain way and hearing certain voices that make you feel shameful or make you feel you don't right. measure up. And so these are things that I feel are clues and indicators that maybe there's something that we need to go after there with God. That's right. In those areas. That's right. So one of the 
things we talked about earlier was that, you know, the human condition is to feel all the feelings, right? Sometimes we feel negative emotions and there's nothing wrong with that because in order to understand abundance, we probably had to have experienced lack at some point. Correct. You need the polarity, right? Yeah. So this isn't about, you know, if you feel a negative emotion, then you need to go get this healing or something like that. So this is really deeper than just feeling an emotion, right? It's like you said, like the patterns and the... Absolutely. You know, I, I, it is. And you know, we're not going to shut down our emotions and not feel yeah. because God feels, right? And, right? and in order to heal, we have to feel. We have to go through these emotions. I think the key is to identify it. And usually it comes in a way that it it hinders you. It's a blockage. It's something that you don't like, yeah. that you realize, I don't want this. That's right. You know, and, and, and so... I think we all have areas. Yeah. And but when the Lord begins to identify those areas, it's because he wants to free us. That's he right. wants to go to the root of those things mm-hmm. and bring the truth. That's right. Yeah. Right. So this month, the month of Keshvan, is around not only the uprooting, but really looking for where there have been seeds planted in our life, metaphorically, of right. course, right, that are rooted in lies, which is really <laughs> kind of yeah. like the root of what inner healing and deliverance is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. Because when we go through traumas and we experience hurts or abandonment or situations that affect our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions is where Mm -hmm. inner healing really focuses on, it can affect how we actually are able to um, perceive and move forward, right, into what God has for us in those areas. Yeah. Yeah. I always share with people that I think one of the greatest ways that we can glorify God is to give him more space inside of us. Yes. Like to let him expand, but it's difficult probably for him to be expansive when we're so kind of weighted down with some of the the lies that we've been believing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think lies are huge. He, they're a cornerstone of a, of a, of a, of a stronghold Absolutely. in our lives. And so I feel that um, lies are, are, are very important to identify. (laughs) And a lot of times we don't realize what they are. And that's why we need God's help. We really do need the Holy Spirit to do an excavation of things (laughs) and to get in there and begin to show us yeah, Yeah. what what he wants to do. how would you describe the difference between maybe a stronghold and deliverance? Are those the same or are those different? I believe they're the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when um, when I think of a stronghold, I think of it as like a collection of beliefs, mm-hmm. right? Where we've been practicing a thought pattern. We've got sometimes an automatic response to things, and that's where we maybe see yeah. rage or anger, right? right? As the result, the fruit you said earlier right. in another conversation. So so we're breaking down these strongholds, which are really a belief system. And they manifest in a pattern in our lives. So when we have the feeling of like we're going around the mountain again, or every time I see this person, I get the same feeling or emotion, or I can't stop thinking about this situation. Those are really examples, right? Absolutely. And we know the Bible says that God is to be our stronghold, right? So stronghold is a place of refuge. It's a place that you go for safety. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to identify these strongholds, a lot of times they're places that are, that you go to for comfort or for protection. And it would be very um, crafty (laughs) of the enemy to use, right, right, (laughs) to, to kind of get you in that pattern where you go around the mountain. And this is something that you go to because you find safety in that. That's right. And so, yeah, I think identifying it's really key. Yeah. So in the coaching world, we call that buffering. Okay. So you can buffer with anything from exercise and cleaning your house to pornography Right. right. Or, you know, being on social media. And those are also kind of red flags. If you're noticing these places of refuge in your life, those are probably the tell sign, right? right. That you have something going on under the surface that if dealt with would probably release a lot of freedom and a lot of space to expand on the inside. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exciting. So, um, so when it comes to the strongholds and the deliverance, mm-hmm. you know, for those of 
of us that maybe don't come from like a, a faith based or a Christian walk background, the idea of like deliverance and the demonic seems kind of scary, right? Like just the word alone, it like it's yeah, like absolutely the scary movies, and absolutely run and hide. <laughs> it is scary. Yeah. <laughs> it really is because it you know that the spirit realm is real. It is angels are real, demons are real, um, uh, and Satan is real. And so we are in a war, mm -hmm. and the Bible describes as two kingdoms clashing, right? But I think that we need to remember as believers, we know that we won that war, mm -hmm. that Jesus conquered the yeah. devil. He made a public spectacle of him, triumphing over him through the cross. That's right. We have authority over the enemy. Right. And and I think because of that, we, you know, as we get healing and we're able to walk in a level of freedom that we're able to exercise that authority and be confident in it. That's and right. that's a process that God takes us through. Yes. But it's important that, um, that we recognize it that's and right. not be ignorant of it. That's right. Yeah. And I love the fact that you said it's a process because that's really, that goes hand in hand with God's cycle of time. Yes. You know, so it's not a one and done. It, and just like anything, right? Like we really do want to just take probably a pill to make the pain go away. But <laughs> yeah. that's not really how he works. Yeah. He loves process because he loves the relationship, right? And the Absolutely. walking with us. Absolutely. Yeah. God is all about the heart. He really is. And I, I, I you know, our heart is our emotions, our our will, our decision making, it's everything flows, life flows, you know, out of our heart. That's right. And so a lot of times when we have trauma and situations in our life, it can kill our heart. Yes. It can shut it down. Yeah. And, you know, God resurrects our hearts. Yes. You know, he, yes. he, he's about resurrecting those places. Yes. And so it really is a beautiful thing if yeah. we're willing to, to go there with yeah. him, um, I believe that he will only give us as much as we're willing to to deal with and handle at the time, but it's always with the purpose to free us. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You just, um, I think you just mentioned another sign, another tell yeah. that if we're experiencing an area in our life where, um, where we're shut down, yeah. right, where we're a little numb, yeah. like that's an opportunity for healing and uh, revitalization. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because we're meant to feel. Yeah. We're meant to experience the good things of yeah. life. And it would be very crafty of the enemy to shut our heart down because Absolutely. shutting our heart down just shuts our life down. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, God is all about the heart. There's so many scriptures. I mean, it's overwhelming when you read about the heart. Yes, <laughs> it really is. And it's like out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you know? Yeah, that's right. And so rivers of living water flow out of the innermost being. <laughs> yeah. It's very much connected. So yes. heart work is hard. Mm-hmm. But it's necessary. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. But it's yeah. it's. I think it's really like you said necessary. It's almost uh, more than that, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's life giving. Like yeah. it really changes the life experience. Yes, like you can just do life, or you can experience it in a way that you want to. That's true. But Absolutely. And I want more. I know. I you mean, do. I want more. I want to grow. I mean, the, and and God. He, he says that. He says we go from glory to glory in him. We're, we're being transfigured from glory to glory, right? Yes, and absolutely. so it is a process, and definitely we want everything that he has for us. Yeah, 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 we sure do. So when it comes to this type of service, ministry, how do people, you know, as far as, um, let, let's say I'm someone who I'm not a Christian, I'm hearing about this for the first time, or I am a Christian, what does my position need to be? Like, do I do I have to know Jesus? I know we've, we've talked a little bit about God and Jesus here. Do I have to be a believer? Like, who has access to this kind of healing and ministry? I believe everyone who's hungry and desires to encounter God uh, is available. It's available for them. Um, you know, Jesus healed whoever came to him. He right. cast out demons. He healed them. He didn't say, you need to be saved. Right. But I think the key is to willingness to go there mm -hmm. and know that, you know, he's going to meet you there. So yeah. it's available to anyone who hungers and thirsts and wants to I experience that. it. So the prerequisite is that you have to, at some level, believe that there's something greater than us, right? We call it God, right? right. And then you have to be willing to open up to experiencing who we call him. Yes, right? I, be I believe so. I believe also yeah. sincere 
You know, yeah. it, it really takes boldness and courage sure to go after this. And a lot of times it's so painful that maybe we just, we choose to shove it down there and not yeah. deal with it. So I think that um, the willingness to go to those places yeah. is key. Yeah. And it's always confidential. It's not something that's taken lightly. Like this is serious work, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We take it very serious. It's confidential. We we're very careful on how we process the application. We, right. When someone is interested and they would like to have a session, we take it serious. We pray over the application a week before. We make sure that we're prepared and it's something that is available. Yeah. yeah. So is that the process then? So, so let's say someone watches is this or maybe they haven't right but they're um they're sensing that they've got a couple of you know kind of red flags in their own lives where mm -hmm. maybe they're getting the nudging like huh maybe I could really use some healing so they'll go through an application process right yeah well initially they will fill out they will request an appointment okay. through the email mm -hmm. and we we will get back with them and they will fill out the, we'll tell them that they would fill out an application okay and return it to us mm -hmm. and they will get a schedule and they can pick the day for their appointment. But it, it takes about a week to process the application sure. and pray over it, read it, see what the Lord is showing. And it really is a safe place where we really rely on God. Mm -hmm. It is not a, a formula. It really is a it's, a, it's a structured environment, meaning that we facilitate this place right. for God to show up because yes. without an encounter or without the revelation yeah. of the Holy Spirit, that's right. then it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. really the experience that changes us, right? Absolutely. Not the words. No. Or what someone no. You know, tells you what their experience was. Yeah. It's when you have your own experience. Right. Inner healing and deliverance are keys yeah. for that. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. All right. So for all of you that are listening to this, um, we just encourage you to step into courage and take the next step if you're finding that this is a good fit for you. And yeah. remember, courage is not... Um, um, this amazing feeling until the thing is done. So know that courage is what it takes to move forward. And it's also a little uncomfortable and that's okay. So thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait until next time. Thank you, Jody, for having me. I'm, thank you. I'm excited. All right. Thank you. See you soon, friend. See you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. you guys.